sometimes I find it can be helpful when I'm trying to do something or accomplish something to reframe it and think about what I would do to not achieve my goals or to ruin this thing I'm trying to create. So in this video, I'm going to talk about seven ways to sabotage your sponsorship opportunity. Check it out. Welcome back to the Sponsorship Collective YouTube channel. If this is your first time here, make sure you give us a like and hit the subscribe button so that you never miss another update on all things sponsorship. The number one way to completely sabotage your sponsorship opportunity is to send a sponsorship proposal too soon. When is the right time to send a proposal? After you have had at least one proper discovery call with a sponsor. So if you are sending sponsorship packages by email to people you don't know, you haven't met, you haven't spoken to, you are in fact sabotaging your efforts, not supporting them. The later in the process you can send a sponsorship proposal, the better. I like to send a proposal after one full meeting, and then I deliver a draft proposal while in a second meeting with my sponsors. After all, if you haven't met with your potential sponsor, how do you know what to propose? The other outstanding way that I would sabotage my sponsorship opportunity if I were trying to ruin it or prevent its success, I would create a tiered sponsorship package like gold, silver, bronze, and I would send that to sponsors making a whole bunch of assumptions of how many logos they want, how many e-blasts they want, and what they consider to be important. Tiered sponsorship packages, gold, silver, bronze, or whatever you want to call them, are the mark of the amateur. Sponsors don't want to work with amateurs. They want to work with professionals. So if I wanted to sabotage my sponsorship efforts, I would create a gold, silver, bronze package, and I would send it to people I've never met. Another great way to sabotage your sponsorship efforts are to overestimate what you can deliver and how much audience you can bring into your property. In other words, if you are assuming that you can bring in hundreds of thousands of people or assuming that once people hear about how great your opportunity is, it will for sure be a success, then you are on the path to sabotage your sponsorship opportunity and you're entering the realm of significant risk. Remember, sponsors are not investors. They're not trying to get in on the ground level of some amazing new thing that you're building. Sponsors are marketers. They want guaranteed return on investment. And if you can't provide that, they will simply go to another vehicle, another form of marketing, and get their guaranteed ROI there. A great way to sabotage your opportunity is to overestimate your delivery capabilities. The next strategy that I would use if I was trying to sabotage my sponsorship opportunity is I would make a bunch of assumptions about what sponsors want. I would assume that every sponsor wants brand awareness and logo placement and e-blasts. And I would assume that they want to bundle these things together in a particular way. And I would send that over to them, letting them know what assumptions I've made on their behalf. In other words, if I wanted to sabotage my sponsorship opportunity, instead of talking to my sponsors, I would assume what they want. I would make assumptions on their behalf and I would tell them what they want. Another great strategy for sabotaging your opportunity is to leave sponsors in the dark. I wouldn't communicate with them as to when I need their assets. I wouldn't communicate with them as to how our planning is going. I wouldn't send them a fulfillment report. I wouldn't send them a valuation of the things they purchased from us. I wouldn't send them proof that we delivered. If I wanted to sabotage my sponsorship opportunity, I would under communicate, leave my sponsors guessing and completely leave them in the dark. The next great way to sabotage a sponsorship program is to take on a controversial partner. Now by controversial, I don't mean a partner that says controversial things or does controversial things. I mean someone who's controversial to your audience. We had a client who ran an event 
and they onboarded a sponsor who made sugary drinks. It was a soda company. Now, there is nothing inherently controversial about this type of a sponsor. In fact, there are many properties who have large soda companies as their sponsors. Which goes back to my greater point. This isn't about whether someone is inherently controversial. It's whether or not they're controversial to your audience and what your audience wants. In this case, this audience was incredibly health conscious and they wanted healthy choices, healthy options as part of this opportunity. And they wanted to work with brands that promoted health. So the feedback to the property, to our client was incredibly negative, not because the audience had a bad experience, but because the property aligned themselves with a brand that doesn't speak to the values of their particular audience. Sometimes a politically controversial brand or a brand that takes a firm stance on hot button issues is exactly the right sponsor for you if it lines up with your audience. The key here is to know what your audience wants and to cater to them. And then the last thing that I would make sure I did if I wanted to completely sabotage my sponsorship opportunity is I would fail to deliver. I would make a bunch of promises to a sponsor, but I would have no way to track whether or not I delivered. I wouldn't be able to tell whether or not I delivered. I would set up no system to track. I wouldn't take screenshots. I wouldn't have someone on my team specifically there to make sure we fulfill on our promises. And I would do so publicly so that my sponsors knew we didn't deliver. Failure to deliver is an outstanding way to completely sabotage your sponsorship opportunity. I would love to hear your big takeaways here. What's the number one thing that stands out to you that you've been doing that you now realize has actually been sabotaging your sponsorship opportunity and your efforts. And if you like this video and you want us to keep making more just like this, please hit the thumbs up button and click the subscribe button. And most importantly, remember, if you wanna sabotage your sponsorship opportunity, you will use a sponsorship proposal to make the sale because we all know the sponsorship proposal does not make the sale, you do. Good luck out there.